early in my life had and my sister passed away. We were two years apart and we were like best friends and we thought we had our life figured out, you know? And she was like a dreamer and a doer and just like, she was gonna do it all. And when she passed away, it was like, wait, like she doesn't get to do that. And it, it didn't even matter what anyone else thought. Like, and people did think she was kind of like, oh, you're gonna be a musician, like good luck, it's a hard gig. And, you know, she was still going after it. She was like, she, in her journal, it was like a hundred things I want to do before I'm going to die. Like play in front of this many people, like affect this many people with one song. Like she had all these dreams and it just taught me like life is so short and you only have this one life to do and create the life you want to create. And so all these people that don't get it, they're not your people. Don't listen to them. Don't let their opinions affect you. Like if you feel something in your gut, just do it. I'm Tom Ward, and over the last couple years, I've had the chance to sit down with some of the biggest celebrities and influencers in the world. What I've always found most fascinating is the stories of the businesses that they've built behind the scenes. On this show, you'll get an inside look of what it takes to build a successful business from some of the biggest celebrities, business people, and up-and-coming entrepreneurs in the world. This is The Tom Ward Show. Welcome to the Tom Ward Show, where we talk to the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. Today, we've got Tezza Barton, and she's a badass entrepreneur, woman of many talents. We're looking at guitar. She's an artist, photographer, creator, and wildly successful entrepreneur. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of course. It's an honor. I really love your story because it's not the worst stories ever are the person who like had a special gift and they're 14 and they realized it and guess what <laughs> they did it and reached their potentials like what kind of who can relate to that you know very few people <laughs> you are more relatable because you there was a bunch of different stops in the way you know you're going to parsons you're you know an artist you're a photographer you're kind of developing this app on the side and do you think that's a reason for your success is is experimenting and trying different things until you kind of found, okay, this is it. Oh, yeah. I think you kind of nailed it on the head. I think I always wanted to do something, right? Like, I mean, everyone in my family, very, very creative and successful creators at that. Not just like I'm a painter and I can't make ends meet. Everyone's like doing it and doing it well. And so I grew up in a place where that was just like welcomed. I didn't really think, oh, starving artist or, you know, these terms that people label for artists was just not in my home. So um, I tried a lot of things before I, I arrived here and I still feel like I'm on my journey. You know, it's never ending. And I think that's part of what being an art artist and entrepreneur is, is just like being open to the to following like what's working, what's not what you're motivated by, what you're inspired by, all that kind of stuff. Were you inspired by your mom, who was, was a success? She's an entrepreneur. She's an interior designer, right? Yes, she's insane. The most amazing woman. Um, I mean, yeah, she, like, literally just watching the way she works, not just doing... She's an ama amazing interior designer, obviously. She crushes it at her actual job. But what she's even better at is her interaction with people and getting people to just fall in love with her and like believe in what she's doing and, you know, kind of bring people together. And I think that's what inspired me the most and something that I still try and like bring into my work every day too. You know, that's one of the best skills to have right? yeah. is people skills. Yeah. You know, you could be a great technical person. You see this all the time, right? They have that real technical, especially with some tech founders, right? They have that dialed in, but can't lead people or bring them together or solve problems or just interact with somebody without like pissing them off. Totally. You exactly. Know? Yeah. No, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's a fine balance, right? Sometimes I wish I had a little bit more oh, uh, me too. that side of things, you know, but you find a business partner for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> do what you're best at. I read that you said, you know, you're obviously artistic and we'll get into that too. But you said it deep down, you always knew you were going to be an entrepreneur. Is that, where did that come from? That comes from, like you said, seeing successful people in your family or just, it was just an inner thing. Like, I know I'm going to I think I just something. liked the idea of making something that connected with people and, and probably because I was so inspired by people that were doing that. So yes, like my mom or my siblings or whoever, but like, you know, these photographers that would change and shift the way, you know, everything was looking and uh, art and all, all that kind of stuff. I just was like, wow, like one person can impact so much 
And, you know, I wasn't even necessarily thinking about it from like a money perspective. Of, of course, like that's what you hope. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I was a musician. I played in a band forever and I just loved like one song. How many people can connect in a room to this one song? They don't even know each other. But if you like the same music, you're like, we're going to get along. You 100%. know, so some I just, of my best friends, they're all it's either they're funny, like we relate that way. Yeah. Or it's music right. and people I haven't talked to in 15 years. Yeah. If I hear something that reminds me of like, hey, they would like this, I'll DM them. Right. Hey, check this album out. It's such a cool way to connect. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of my driving force. So, you know what I, I liked? You went to Parsons and let's talk about that now, right? But you said you were into Annie Leibowitz. Um, that was one of you know the photographers you loved. And I read that you said that it was... To them, to the cool kids at school, it was almost a bad thing to make money. And I totally related to that because now you watching this, now it's like if somebody does a brand deal, your favorite creator, you're like, go get a girl, get, get, get that money. Yeah, yeah. When Ike was coming up, it wasn't like that. The yeah. worst thing you could be was a sellout. Like totally. making money was like, oh, you want to make money? No. Oh, what is wrong with you? That's you're not, not the way to go. And you're not an artist. If yeah. you, if that's not, absolutely not. Yeah. It's, but it's a bunch of bullshit. Because if you look yep. at the Beatles, right, arguably the greatest songwriters of all time, yeah. they wanted hits. Yeah. And why? Because they wanted to reach as many people as possible, the biggest audience possible, mm -hmm. being inspired by something you did. Yeah. You didn't fall into that, like, I'm cooler than cool. I want to be underground. Was that hard to do? Or you, did you go through a phase like, I want to be the starving artist and who cares about the, who cares about the money? I think like... Okay, one thing that I didn't like is that in art school, you're studying all these successful people that are obviously making money. And then you go and do something that's commercial or whatever, and people are offended, and they're like, well, you don't get it because that doesn't mean it, it's connecting or emotional and whatever. And yeah, and that always bothered me because I, I that's when Instagram came out for me when I was in art school, and I was like, light bulb went off. Wow, like a way to finally connect with people and like, Everyone all of a sudden cared about photography and they hadn't before, like the average person. And so all of a sudden it was like even my work was being respected more by the average person because they're like, oh, you're a photographer. Like, how did you do that? I also now like I'm not a photographer. I'm a doctor, but I want to take a good photo. Mm -hmm. And so that was really the cool part of of Instagram and, of you know, being able to like be a little bit more recognized for even just my photography skills in the beginning, you know? Now, did these cool kids think Instagram was cool or did they think... No, they hated like, it. They what are you doing? Did. Like, I, I mean, I think that's like, you know, in school, at the time, Instagram, I mean, I know this was something we we're going to maybe get into, but it's like people were so judgmental, right? And I actually let that affect me. Like, I mean? think for two years, I kind of didn't really post what I wanted to post. Because you're scared. Because I was embarrassed. I was of scared. Course. And it, I really regret that. And I really wish I just had, you know, I would be way further along if I didn't let that um, stop me. Well, you're doing and, and okay. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. <laughs> I, I made it. But but I did. No, I know what what was mean. cool is I did connect. When I started doing it, I was like, whoa, like I'm connecting with people all over the world, like online. I don't have, it doesn't, if the people in my real life don't get it, it's fine. There's like this online community I can connect with. And now that's like exploded times a million. And I think obviously people are much more receiving of that. But at the time, you know, it wasn't. So I feel like you just got to listen to your to your own self. Well, it turned out you were right and they weren't, <laughs> they right? They were wrong. They were wrong. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah. But this isn't a, a problem that existed eight or ten years ago. Yeah. This happens right now. The person watching this goes, the aspiring creator or the new creator, because everyone wants to be creator, right? It's a pretty good gig if you can get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they all want to do that. But say you're, you know, in high school. And you want, you've got a passion for something, but you know you're going to get for it. You know you're going to get made fun of by that mean kid in school or the mean girls are going to make fun of you. Like, who do you think you are? No, Do you think you're better than us? No one cares about what you had for lunch today or, yeah. or about your picture or about whatever your ukulele playing, whatever your thing is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have advice for them? Or like, how do you yeah. push forward knowing you're going to get it? It's, I think... Not to get deep, but we're going to get, get deep. deep. We're going to get a little deep. But like I um, early in my life had and my sister passed away. We were two years apart and we were like best friends and we thought we had our life figured out, you know, and she was like a dreamer and a doer and just like she was going to do it all. 
And when she passed away, it was like, wait, like she doesn't get to do that. And it it didn't even matter what anyone else thought. Like, and people did think she was kind of like, oh, you're going to be a musician. Like, good luck. It's a hard gig. And, you know, she was still going after it. She was like, she, in her journal, it was like a hundred things I want to do before I'm going to die. Like play in front of this many people, like affect this many people with one song. Like she had all these dreams and it just taught me like life is so short and you only have this one life to do and create the life you want to create. And so all these people that don't get it, they're not your people. Don't listen to them. Don't let their opinions affect you. Like if you feel something in your gut, just do it. And like simplify it down and just ignore the stupid noise. I know it's hard when you're young and like it it feels like these op opinions of people matter, but they're just projecting their own crap onto you. And like your opinion is all that matters. When she passed away, so you're she's 17, you're 19, right? So did all those journals and all those dreams of her put additional pressure on you? Did you kind of take some of that on and go she wanted this i'm gonna go you know after music extra hard now i'm not gonna let those dreams oh die. yeah yeah is that did you kind of have that attitude for sure it definitely like it changed my whole Life. i mean yeah i think it just like one i i realized oh you know i i only have so much time i gotta get all this stuff done that's how it felt like i was just like had a big list either it puts you in a dark space or you're kind of motivated by, you know, what's in front of you. And so just taking advantage of every single moment is like the way I live my life now. And did that, did you ever look back, you know, when you get those trolls and hate and we all get it yeah. and I'm, I'm old as f and it still bugs me when I get that troll making a mean comment. Oh. I hate your face. That necklace looks stupid. Whatever the f*** it is. It's like one comment one out of comment. a billion. I don't nice care if it's a hundred good comments. Yeah, it's like, what focus. the f***, right? But, but did that really help you kind of just focus on what's important and kind of... Because when you're a normal 19-year-old, I mean, I remember when I was 19, I didn't, you know, I had all the time in the world. There was no rush. Yeah. I was going to figure it out. Yeah. You know, whenever. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Right, right. But you didn't look at things anymore. Like, when, what was your immediate focus? Was it music at the time? It was music. It was. I just felt like I had to give it a shot. I was really kind of a background in her music. I was, I mean, we, we did it together, but she was the star. And it pushed me to just be like out of my comfort zone, like, OK, like I'm going to do this for her. You know, this is going to like and, and I made my brothers join the band. Like it was a whole situation. <laughs> it's like a Partridge family situation. I'm like, we're doing this. And you know what? We played in a band for six years and it was good. Like, That's awesome. It sounds cute. Family band, whatever. Yeah. But like we had a moment. We had a moment. Um, But it, yeah. And then that made me also just realize like when I kind of realized, OK, maybe music isn't getting me to where I want to go. I want to try something else. Like I'm going to... Like I'm never going to be the great artist. Yes. Like I love performing, but like, do I really want to like do this hustle and do this thing? I want to like be able to connect with even more people. And I have more, you know, I really wanted to like start a magazine or something at the time. So I was like, I, I got to move to New York. I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. But like, I still had that same like fire, mm -hmm. you know, for, and following my dreams. For and me. too, you had some great inspiration. I'm a music nut. And I, you said that like, Janis Joplin and Joan Jett, like, oh, yeah. were my girls. And they're, if if you don't know who they are, shame on you, go look them up. Well, well, insert, Michael, insert more. picture here of <laughs> yeah. them. But, you know, they were bad women in a time where, you know, a lot of women weren't that outspoken or kind of out there fashion-wise and stuff. Like, did fashion was a big thing with you too, right? Did you take some of that? Is that part of the whole scene that you like too? Yes. Like, I, I think that's, and you nailed it on the head. I think I just... As a kid was looking at these women, like, they don't care at all what anybody thinks. They're just doing their shit and they're up there just crushing it on stage. The confidence, like, their outfits, everything, like, the whole vision. And that's, oh, like, I can't even, it's too much to talk about. It's too Why? much fashion. I just love it so <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah. But I, I think that's really, like. Who are your girls? Talk about them. Who were who are the ones for you? Who are your guys? I, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, Janis Joplin. I, but just the way she just, the rawness her and the voice. realness of her voice, like. I can't really even, oh, and yeah, I mean, Joan Jett style wise, I was like the rock and roll vibes. I mean, I was even into like Led Zeppelin. I mean, oh, I think, yeah. you know, kind of crossing like these boundaries and connecting with people in like, I don't know, music and fashion. That's really where I found like so, a marriage. It in, goes together. Yeah.
Yeah, I interviewed John Barbados, the men's fashion designer. I oh, mean, amazing. he built a whole brand around yes. that, right? Yeah. Rock and roll. And, yeah. and it was great. He was telling me, like, I got to meet Jimmy Page. Like, Jimmy Page calls me now. Like, could you imagine? He's like, oh, no. this is a kid from Detroit no, who like clothes. And oh. all of a sudden, like, Jimmy Page's, we're just like shooting this shit. Like, mind blown. Mind blown. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that's everything i gotta i gotta switch careers no, I'm just <laughs> so so you got music and you're like okay love it i'm passionate about it i like a lot of things about it but i don't think it's going to take me to where i need to go were you at parsons at the time school no, of design no I, I that i only did for a little bit and then i ended up doing it's a it's a long you came back to utah yeah i that. came back to utah got my fine arts degree and okay. then kind of really focused on the music for a little bit and then, then i what? decided to move to new york and i was like for what just going i'm like we're doing it me and my husband he had a job i'm like you gotta quit because we're moving to new york and, <laughs> and he's like what um but he kind of wanted to too we just it was calling us yeah like i needed to be back in the city i loved the energy i loved the people i didn't know what i was gonna do there but i just knew i had to be there okay so we moved there and and your husband's a develop was a developer he was a developer he was working at a startup they're like you can kind of work remote defer some salary i mean we were like not making ends meet by any means mm -hmm. I, we got a notification from the bank it's like <laughs> negative dollars in your bank account i'm like I've been there. i gotta figure something out like how am i gonna make money here you know so i was really leaning into photography at the mm -hmm. time that's when i was like okay i'm a photographer i'm moving to new york i'm gonna like work in fashion photography or something like that and then what i like about you too is okay there's a lot of artistic and creative people out there right but the thing that's up that you have that let's be honest, most of them don't, is you have the hustle and the drive too. Mm -hmm. I read that you kind of said, you went after brands, like oh, yeah. a gangster. Like you said, <laughs> I want to work at, with Urban Outfitters. And you know what? I'm going to pretend I work there and I'm just going to show them, look, this is the shit you can get if exactly. you work with me. Is that exactly. like, was that your whole attitude? Yeah, I would just literally make my portfolio <laughs> to be exactly what that brand wanted. And also at the time, you know, brands didn't know how to create that much content. Mm -hmm. Like they were like, how are we supposed to keep up with the amount of content we have to create? And I'm like, I got you, let me show you. And I think that's like the key. Like if you want to work with a brand as an influencer or as a photographer or whatever it is, like just act like they've already hired you and show them wh what value you're going to provide. And you know, it'll be like a light bulb. They're just people like us behind the brands trying to like figure it out. And everyone's looking for new creative, new ways to think about something. So you just gotta fake it till you make it. Well, see now it's a proven career path. I mean, yeah, you've seen true. influencers and creators do it. The person watching this goes, yeah, of course see, that's what you do. Right. You know? yeah. But for you, there was no roadmap. There was yeah. no, you know, successful influencer that's been doing it for five years previous to you and you kind of copy, you know, some of the things they did. Yeah. You just kind of had to figure it out yourself. Um, yeah. Where'd that come from? You just kind of had the goal and figured out, back, you know, reverse engineered how to get there? Yeah, I think I just always knew I was going to make it work. Somehow I was going to, I remember, like, I watched the Annie Leibovitz documentary and I wrote myself, like, a, in my journal, I'm like, one day people will remember me for my work like Annie Leibovitz and I like signed it in like art school just like so cheesy but I I like meant that you know and I just well pause on that real quick because that's such an outlandish statement right <laughs> you know let's be oh, real know, at the man. time for you I mean you now that makes sense like of course people know who she is wildly successful entrepreneur right but at the time this you know girl writing that of course you're not going to be as good as Annie Leibovitz. Yeah. But I've interviewed a ton of entrepreneurs and creative people and every single one of them have had that. And I've, they've told me like, you almost have to be delusional yes. because there there is no evidence to this statement I just made. Yeah. Annie Leibovitz is one of the she's Hall of Famer, one of the greats <laughs> to ever do it. And somehow I just think like, of course I'll be as big as her. Yeah, like, yeah. where do you, is that something you're just born with or where does that confidence come That's from? That's so, I've never really even like stopped to think about that. Which is why you have it. I guess, yeah. I'm like, I, I, I think I watched people do it and I, I liked that. What it, you know, I thought, oh, I like the way that seems like it would feel or the way they're making people feel. Like back to my mom, it's, she just, she has that like star power. And it's like, she just walks into a room and people are like, I just, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I don't know. Like she just has it. And I, I just love people that bring that joy out of people. Like even just talking to you, it's like, you can just tell you're passionate. You have this like I wanna be energy here. and people like yeah. want to absorb it. And so I think, you know, you're just going to do what you're going to do because you love it. And so I think it's actually 
more than that, it's just having the passion, like figuring out what you like. And I think if you're young and you're like, I don't know what I like. I like a lot of stuff. Yep. My advice is like, try everything. Just start trying stuff. Like I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer. So I was digging into that. I was learning how to sew. I put on fashion shows and then I took photos of the stuff I made. And then I realized, oh my gosh, like I can tell such a bigger story about the clothes through just one picture. Like I really love the storytelling aspect of photography. So I'm going to lean into photography. And then, you know, I thought, oh, I want to start a magazine because I love words and and images and music and makeup and all this and like I can tell I can bring a world together in like a magazine I mean this is when magazines were still about I remember. and uh, <laughs> you know so it's like I think just start trying things like you, it will teach you what you're good at and what you're bad at and those are and those are like little things that help you get to where you're going yeah so I think it's great advice and that's why I said at the beginning of this interview that's why I like your story because it wasn't you're not LeBron James you didn't, <laughs> you didn't know at 12 years old and yes. everyone in the gym knew you're going to go to the NBA. And it's like as clear as day to everybody who's there watching, right? Yours wasn't like that. Yours was like trying different things. And I think that is the secret because every startup founder I've talked to, none of them, n the companies never ended up as it was in the beginning. They pivoted a million times, a million times. until they got it right. And then creators and stuff too did the same thing in their personal selves yeah. or brand. Yeah. I'm going to start out creating this kind of content. Okay, this doesn't work. Travel vlogs. And yeah. I'm going to start doing beauty stuff. And then you just kind of... And it's the, the same goes for starting a brand, right? Go ahead. Because it's... I think, like, you have a personal brand or you're doing this or whatever. But it's like, when you're like, I need business or, you know, I want to start a business. What do I do? Yes, that's a great question. And you're like... What uh, do you do? I, and my biggest advice is, like, just start. Because everyone has ideas. Everyone wants to start a business. Like, that's like... But all like that first step will take you to step two, step three, step four. It's like you call, you call, you call till you get one answer. Mm -hmm. That one answer will be like, yep, we can make your product. Then you're like, cool, well, I guess I have to tell them what I want to make. And then, you know, it's like it's just that little it's the baby steps yep. that get you there. And sometimes not even worrying about the end goal. Obviously, you have an end goal, but just like focus on the small things. And those are things you can accomplish every day and you'll get started. Speaking of small things, community. I've talked about community. These guys are probably tired of hearing about community. <laughs> you can't see them right now, but it's the hot buzzword now. Yeah. And I really am impressed with kind of your whole attitude towards Instagram from the beginning. You said, and I'm probably going to misquote this, but it was basically focus on a small amount of people and provide value to them and really deliver. And guess what? They'll do the work for you. Yeah. They're going to tell your friends, hey, check this out. She just, you know, Tessa just DM'd me or she got on a Zoom call with me and asked what I thought about the content or whatever. And yeah. it kind of grew from there. Yeah. Was that, you didn't take, it sounds like, the narcissistic approach. Let's be real. A lot of us take like, I'm the most interesting person in the world. Of course people would want to see what I had for lunch today or my outfit of the day I or wish whatever. that was all I had to do, you know, unfortunately. No, no, you had to work. Um, but yeah. how, how did you have that strategy from the beginning? It wasn't laid out. There was no roadmap. I think that, you know, I... So when I started taking Instagram seriously, you know, I had been doing blogging and Tumblr and Pinterest. I, I was on every platform from the day I could be. I, I knew there was something there that I liked and I couldn't quite figure it out. I, and I wasn't successful at it by any means till 10, ten years later. So <laughs> it was a lot of years of doing something that no one cared about. But um, when I decided, okay, I'm gonna take Instagram seriously. I know I have something here. I'm trying to figure out what it is. And it's my number one kind of mindset has always been, what are you giving? And you know, because a lot of there's a lot of like people talking about what they have or what they're get like all the stuff that they're doing or this or that. But it's like, what value are you giving? Right. But hold audience? on a sec. Th there's a lot of people doing that who are massively successful. Yeah. And that's what's kind of annoying. It's like, but I don't have great abs or I'm not, you know, I don't look yeah. great in a mini skirt. I can't that can't be my only thing. I right. just don't have that to give. Right. And I think the difference is like that's a that's a career path. It for is. Sure. For Go sure. do it. Get your bag, whatever. <laughs> but it's more if for the community aspect. Yeah. I think if you focus on kind of back to what you were saying, like what you're giving. So like the second I decided I'm a photographer, I've worked all these years to like create my special sauce and have my look. And the second I said, here you go, you can have it too. Edit just like me. 
I mean, the that people were like, uh, okay. Like, as artists, I think sometimes you get, like, protective, right? Of, of what course. you feel, as you should. But at the same time, the more you share, the more you're going to grow as an artist, as a person, and you're going to be able to evolve and do it with the people that, you know, are also believing in the same thing that you're believing in. And so, you know, I was doing that just as on a personal level. But then the second that we kind of started the brand, that's always also been at the, you know, the core value of, of our brand and why we exist today. So that's why. So what what were you giving before the brand? So you're on Instagram. You're taking the serious now. What are you giving? What was your thing? I all about photography, creativity, photography, how to pose better, how to take better images. Okay. Let me tell you what kind of camera to use. Let me tell you what lens. I started selling Lightroom presets before that was a thing. So, you know, I was like, OK, like, here it is. Everyone take it. And then everyone was like, this is so cool. The serious photographer was like, love it. But the average person was like, can't use that. And I don't want to go edit on my computer. Mm -hmm. And so that was a light bulb of like, oh, we should build an app because, you know, one, there wasn't really an app out there at the time coming from this creator's perspective. Everything was, you know, very tech based and probably built in a, by a bunch of dudes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. We're not all bad. No, you're you know? great. Hey, like I have my husband's on the team, so I support the men. But, I, I know what you're saying. Um, but Let's yeah, say a bunch of engineers. A bunch of engineers. There you go. You're gorgeous. We love you. We yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just messed it around. But no, we just kind of saw that there was just an opportunity there, and so we we wanted we already had the community of people interested. So that was really where you know when we were able to actually build the app and um, you put it out, we had immediate success just because we had been cultivating this community of people super interested in art, creativity, taking better images, all of that. But you know, what's so great about your story is. Now, like I said, last two interviews, we talked about this. This is like a thing now. Yeah. You build community before you launch the brand, right? Where then that wasn't the case at all. You launch the product first. Right. Then you figure out the community. Who's buying it? Who are they? I don't know. Yeah. Let's, we'll yeah. figure it out. Get we'll the see. data. We'll is get the, the data. Ads start working. Yeah. Or whatever. Where, where it right. doesn't, you know. So yeah. that was a different approach than what was out there. Is that just go back to there was it wasn't calculated or anything. It was just your whole philosophy of just like giving yeah i think when i look at okay like if we're gonna just get down to the nitty-gritty of it sure okay when i was started growing on instagram gaining followers having a community of people that were like i'm gonna click the follow button mm -hmm. it was because every day i was like providing more and more information and i was like giving them something to come back to and believe in and then go tell their friends about right and be like this is i i was willing to share my thing so they started being, I'm not, that's bad grammar. No, like advocates. They for began you. sharing what they like to do as oh, creators, right? Okay. So it, it made the creative space like open and inviting. And I think going back to kind of um, the beginning of my story, just growing up in a family where being creative was like awesome, everyone could do it. And then I grew up and I realized like, no one grows up like that. Everyone like it's like go get a real job. Yeah, that's like, how that's people grow cute, up. But mm, yes. I was like, no, like everyone is artistic, and I hated hearing when people say, "Oh, I'm not artistic. I'm not creative." I'm like, yes, you are. Like, it's much more simple than that, and I really do believe that. And so that kind of became, you know, my mission, and I think people really connected with that. So you got the idea. Now you're in New York. Luckily, your husband's a developer, so you don't have to pay an engineer tens and really hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, really that was a good move on one. your part, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you have this idea. Now, you were working at this thing for like a year and a half, yeah. I think, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. side hustle. And you're doing photography at this time to, yeah, to make ends meet? Yeah, I'm doing photography, meet? kind of influencing some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband was working at a startup still, even into like a year after we launched the app, he still worked at the other startup. You know, that's a good lesson. I think a lot of people think, I guess side hustle's kind of a thing now. What well, is a thing? Yeah. But I think a lot of people still have in their heads where it's all or nothing. Yeah. I have to quit my job. I have to drop out of school to do this for real. Yeah. Where I think you prove, no, you don't. No. You still got to pay the bills. You still got to pay the bills. And I think just like getting yourself to be pushed to the limit of like, okay, I've done all I can do here. I'm like, I, it's ready for me to like 
give it all I have. Like, not that you shouldn't believe in your idea from the beginning, because you definitely should. And no one else is going to believe in it for you until you believe in it. But I do think, you know, sometimes it just, I mean, we couldn't have lived in New York and had the, like, lifestyle we did if we weren't doing everything all at once, mm -hmm. you know? And, so, and we were talking about it the other day because I was like, how did we do it? Like, how did we do all we were doing, travel, do everything, build the app? have I, i'm kind of confused like we didn't sleep <laughs> yeah and i'm like i think it's just you have to be you know you're gonna have those years of just like grind 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 like and not that i'm still i'm not still grinding because i am trust me but it it takes a lot to launch something like that you're and be able to also have a side hustle. So, what did it look like you launch you said it was immediate success what did that look like I mean, I mean, immediate how many success, downloads? I guess that's what did success like, look like at that's, the time? you know, yeah, I think we had a million downloads within the first year. Wow. Um, which just, I think we didn't, we honestly weren't like, we're starting this bad business. We're going to crush it. We're going to be competing with all these other apps. Like we just did it because we, we were almost forced to do it. The community was like, we need this, like help make it easier. And we were like, okay, like, yeah. we're gonna do it. We're trying. Um, so when we launched and like people downloaded it, we were like, okay, I guess we, we're, we have an app. Now we have to make it better every day. We have to keep developing it. We have to keep going. We have to actually hire other people. Like we can't do this, just <laughs> the two of us for much longer. You was know? there money coming? Was there like a free version and a paid version? There was a free version. There was a paid version. Okay. So now yeah. you got money coming in and yeah. And we learned, we made so many mistakes. I think we like truly, I think even we launched with a different paid, like it wasn't a, um, the subscription was higher. Cause we were thinking, well, we're not like an app. We're a brand. And that still is kind of how we think of it. Um, like, we're not a tech company, but no. we're just like this brand. And so we were kind of going to be offering different things. And people were so upset because, you know, people don't think you have to pay for an app. For some reason, that's still... Yeah. I'm like, wait, like, I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody messed up in the beginning, Apple. Um, <laughs> Where it's like apps were free for this a little cost bit. money to make. Guys. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I wish I you do you go to work for free? I don't yeah. know. Um, so we really learned a lot from our community and we they were heavily involved in the product, like helping us build it, telling us what they wanted, and they still are. That is like how our brand exists is because of our community. Um, so I I think that's kind of you know. To be honest, we hadn't we didn't even run an ad until a year ago. Yeah, I heard everything that. was purely organic because they are a part of the brand just as much as I am. So it's been a really cool experience to just bring people in from the beginning. Kind of like you were saying, I think a lot of brands just launch and then they're like, then we'll find our people. But if you can find your people in the beginning and make them a part of the process, then they're gonna be with you for the test of time. Like, you know. And what's wild is okay. Look, I, you know, I don't, I'm not into photo editing or photography or anything. And don't use, no, I don't use Tezzer or other, other, other apps, right? I'll no, get it, you too. Don't worry. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is about as good, as good as I get, right? There's no improving. But there's so much competition. Even I know that. I mean, there's so many different apps out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, okay, beginning, not many out there are, you know, followers or community wants it. We're going to give them what they want. And hey, guess what? Now we're making some money. There's a ton of downloads. Like, okay, we're going to improve. We're going to get better, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But now, competition. Yeah. And specifically, male founders backed by big bucks. Big bucks, yeah. Now, what does that mean? <sighs> <laughs> what does that mean for little old Tessa? <laughs> like, what does that mean for you? So, okay. In the beginning, it's good to be a little naive, I think, because okay. you're you're blind to like you're just doing what you, you're good at. And if it's working, just like keep going for it. You know, it's good to pay attention to what's go going on around you. But sometimes it's helpful to be kind of naive. I'll say that. <laughs> but I think for us, you know, I what I realized all the other apps out there don't have personality. They aren't making creating fun. They're just a tool. And we wanted to bring brand and personality into creating and make it inviting and like a safe space to come and like be inspired by other people, but also like make stuff that's inspiring yourself. And so having that, like the perspective of one, I use the app every day. I'm a creator myself. I need the tools. So I'm able to like, you know, have that input, but also 
just, you know, standing out in a crowd of, of all these apps that are very techy and very, you know, just a tool, I think is our advantage and something that we've just decided to lean into. And we don't have to be, you know, this, this big brand. And, and yeah, like, I mean, I go into meetings all the time with investors or men in suits and we love them. They're so sweet, <laughs> but they don't take me seriously. They're like, Cute. even at this point, until I explain what we have, like our subscribers or, you know, our when they see the or, numbers. Or, yeah. They're like, oh, like, but at first they're like, it's a girl. She built a cute even app. Even now in 2023? Even now, even now. I And I went to a lot of meetings last year and yeah. I was just always kind of shocked by people's just reservations. Wow. And I think we're like, we're in the creative space and we're like, oh, of it's course, everywhere. Yeah. You can't deny it. But yeah. still, I think so many people don't get it. And... So I think there's still so much room um, for people to like, you know, come into this to to the space. But I mean, females are dominating this space. Sorry. I when I sit down with people, it's yeah. mostly females. There's, so just, I get it. I'm with. But you. I think it's it's our moment. We're having a moment. We're crushing it. We're we're bringing people up together. We're cr- like people are connecting with us. We're really having our moment. And so being able to speak to those people and be a female leader and also, like create a tool that all these people are using every day is is really important and something that we focus on a lot. Now, I heard you say you, be, being a, a female-founded company was an advantage mm-hmm. that you had that the others didn't. So what... I'm a guy. What do I know? <laughs> what advantage... What do you have over me if I start an app? Like, what's... What what benefit sell us on why the you know sell the person in the suit watching why they should take females seriously and what they can bring to the party that guys can't necessarily? I mean, I think we you know one just being able to if you look at the space, let's yeah. just like break it down. Break it you down, know? girl. It's like these women are crushing it. They they are connecting. They're driving sales. They're bringing people together in a way that they haven't been able to before i mean i think we're just creative geniuses no. <laughs> i'm kidding but i think just tech the word tech like you you automatically you don't even think of women bro when you think i of think tech. Of yeah tech you're bro. tech bro but there's a word for it. it's an industry that's been around like and it's been crushing it and it's all anyone wants to talk about but what no one is bringing just this other perspective like personality be- like beauty i think like you know i everything in our app is about inspired by vintage magazines and and photography and all these things and not that all art before that wasn't but i think even just having that be the focus s- makes it stand out against like all all these other apps and you know too i i, I don't want to undersell kind of what you said before i think you might have undersold it a little bit because it is an incredible feat, I think, to make an app a brand. Because an app, I was really thinking about this when I was kind of doing homework and researching and stuff. An app to me is a very personal thing. Mm-hmm. It's a one-on-one thing. Right. It's not a one-to-many thing. Yeah. It's, I have this app because I like it and because it provides some kind of value to me, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't talk to my friends about Unless it's something like really setting the world on fire kind of app I'm really excited about. I'll say, hey, you should check this out. It's a great calendar app or meditation app or whatever. Right. But for the other 99% of the apps on my phone, I don't talk to anybody about it. I don't interact with, I don't follow, I don't follow that app's Instagram page. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they have an Instagram page. Right. Right. It's just me and the app. Right. It's not the community definition is right. One to many. Right. Right. Or many to many, I should say. Mm -hmm. So... That ain't easy. So do you think that's really what, I think that's what makes you stick out from all the other ones out there. They don't have that. You do. Yeah, exactly. I think we, you know, our users also believe in this art of life that we talk about. You know, we we really believe like you can make your own life, the way you live the life, your life, the way you create, the way you do the things that you do, the way you organize your kitchen. I don't know anything that is your art. And like it, we celebrate that. And I think like bringing people together in that has been, um, the reason people want to talk about it and connect with other people that use it. And it's like any brand, you know, you think of like random example, I don't know, Nike. Sure. It's like, just do it. And you hear some, you see someone else wearing Nikes and you're like, we get it. Like we know we're doing like, we're believing in the same mission and the same thing and i think that's how people feel about our brand and they love that 
it, they connect to other creators through it. So I think that's kind of the uniqueness. And also, you know, we're not ever, we don't want to be a Lightroom. We don't want to be like the best tech you've ever seen. We want to keep you creating and, and feeling happy that, you know, you have somewhere fun to go create. And also, you know, we bring, we work with other brands. Like we work with Revolve or um, American Music Awards or, you know, because these brands want to collaborate with us and and celebrate like our, what our brand represents as well, where they're, they're not going to do that with like a, a Lightroom or an Adobe product or something. It's just not as like sexy. So we, that's something else. It doesn't that have we, they don't have the, personality. The personality. Yeah. So that's really where, you know, I think we have an advantage as well. And then the other thing too, I read you're doing is you're having in real life events. Yeah. Like what app does that? Exactly. I've never interacted with my app at the mall or at a restaurant or yeah. a bar. Like yeah. who, who does that? And yeah. where did that come from? The I mean, I think going back to like, I just wanted to create a world, right? Like, and when I think of the brand, I think of it like a restaurant or like a fashion brand where it's like touching all the senses. You can smell it. You can taste it. You can like, you walk past a restaurant in New York and it's like, I don't know what's going on in there, but I got to get inside and I don't even know what they're serving, but I definitely want to sit down. Yeah. That's how we think about the brand. And I think because it just goes back to like, you know, the reason I just love creating. I think it's it's offering so many different perspectives and like it's a little bit of magic. It's something that that doesn't have to that doesn't exist yet, but it could. And like, where could it go? I, I, I And there's just, no instruction manual. There's no for instruction. It. It's a feeling. And, and that's really what we hope to do at Tesla is just like give people that feeling. So what do you got coming up for what's next for Tesla? Like why, what do you, what do you have going on? What improvements? You so know, many improvements. Talk about what's going on with it. Um, no, Promote. we're really focusing on video. So, well, so much is, coming. Of yes. Course. But I think even like the, we always are looking at like what's the Tesla touch? Like what's the special thing that we're offering? It's not just like a tool, right? Okay. So we're bringing lots of fun and easier ways to create cool and unique videos like certain things with one tap we have something called the vibe button coming where it can kind of like randomize and create things catered to how you like to create as a creator um so i'm really excited about that and we're also doing really just focusing like i said like you said in the beginning on um in-person community things That's because cool. i think you know it's fun to connect online and, and we all love it, but I think in person you are inspired and, and our goal is to like be a home base for creators, a place people can come, be inspired, inspire other people, learn. Um, so that's something we're really like taking to the next level this year is doing not just like an event where you come and it's cute, mm -hmm. but a place you're going to actually like take something away and learn something and and do something while you're there as well. And that is a good lesson for you watching too. I don't do Zoom interviews. Yeah. Why? Because you don't get this. Yeah. I feel your energy and passion. It's like jumping off the fucking seat. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I don't get that yeah. in my computer no. with you in, you know, New York and I'm here in LA and you don't get the same thing. There is something to be said for making real life connections. I think because of the pandemic, especially, we kind of got so used to it's way more convenient too. Yeah. Also, it's sometimes you're like, I have to drive. I got to drive. I gotta but it's always this worth person. it. You always leave feeling so much better. And then, yep. you, you know, that makes you more creative. I think we all get in creative ruts. And I was talking about this last night with a friend. It's like, what do you do when you're in a creative rut? And I'm like, what do you do? Either, I, I just like to get around creative people because you absorb their energy and it, it kind of motivates you. And you almost stop thinking about, I need to be creative. And you start doing mm -hmm. rather than just being like, uh, focusing on like that you're not creating you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of i think part of the reason we like to do things in person is to just keep that energy going i think that's a great place to end start doing start that's doing. it Let's i think go. that's the I message like that. of this whole thing yeah whether you know you're dealing with you know future hate that you're going to get if you do this particular thing or i'm not sure what business i want to start i mean that was that's been your message i think through this whole interview is exactly. just start doing yeah, it. start doing it well thank you so much this is oh a real God, pleasure it's so you. much fun you're awesome thank you so much for watching hopefully you like this subscribe and turn on notifications for new interviews every tuesday morning at 10 a.m pacific standard time and it's tough to watch a video for like 45 minutes because you're doing other things you can also listen to the audio podcast wherever podcasts are available so thanks so much for watching guys